so that you and I need to understand we need a savior. We need somebody. And the scripture tells us that when the second way we receive commandments is through observance to 613 meets vote. That means through the observance of the commandments. That means that's the way that Israel received. That's the way that Israel received all of their promises. But if one thing was offended, that means that they could not receive the promise and that the promise became a curse. But isn't it wonderful? Today you can learn about all the promises. You can learn about the promises of Rosh Hashanah. You can learn about the promises of Yom Kippur. You can learn about the promises that God gave to Israel and receive the promise without the curse because Jesus became the curse for us. Can I get a witness somewhere? He became the curse for us. So now I have access to everything that God promised Israel, including the supernatural season of this new year, including the supernatural season of the seventh month, including all of the promises that God gave to Israel when he said it's not a secular segment of time anymore. It's a supernatural segment of time. And Jesus bought this supernatural segment of time for you and for me. And somebody ought to give God the praise. So now we are understanding, and for those of us that are here today, I want to speak to you for a moment about the supernatural secret of the blood that speaks. These are the messianic miracles of Yom Kippur. One of the supernatural secrets of the blood that speaks is that we need to know that the blood that speaks literally means that there is a prophetic parallel throughout the Hebrew scriptures all the way to the time that Jesus hung on the cross. There is a prophetic parallel everywhere throughout the Bible that the blood speaks. Every time we see atonement, every time we see 10 and 7, every time we see the sacrifice that Jesus that, that, uh, of the old covenant, we see a prophetic prefiguring of the blood that speaks. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, the text teaches us that the blood that speaks is a connection to the, to, to the direction of Calvary. The Bible says the blood speaketh better things than that of Abel. So you and I need to understand that every place in the word of God, we see a sacrifice. Every place in the word of God that we see an atonement. When we understand what that means, the blood is speaking. Somebody needs to say, I need to raise my awareness. I need to understand what all the symbols and similitudes in the Hebrew scriptures mean. Because when I begin to understand the similitudes and the symbols in the Hebrew scriptures, the blood speaks to me. The blood is going to speak to me. I'm going to see what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. Somebody ought to say, I need to know what the blood is speaking at this very moment on Yom Kippur somebody ought to give God the praise and give God the glory the blood that speaks means that in every place there is a declaration there is a revelation of Calvary's cross in the Hebrew scriptures whenever you see a sacrifice say this with me every place the blood is seen there is a declaration of revelation that points to Calvary's cross in the Hebrew scriptures. Somebody ought to say the blood is speaking. The first supernatural secret of the blood that speaks is found in what I call the atonement code. Those of us need to know there is a code throughout the scriptures and it is a code that is God's son of salvation revealed in creation. It is an atonement code. Put your hands up right now and say this with me. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, today I receive all of the breakthrough, all of the anointing, all of the power that you want to give me today through the power of the cross. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you an atonement code that we find throughout the Hebrew scriptures. And as we look at this atonement code, we are going to see the blood that speaks. We're going to see something that Jesus did on Calvary's cross. We're going to see what Calvary means. We're going to see the supernatural implication of what Calvary was all about. First of all, we need to understand if we're going to look at an atonement code, one of the most significant symbols in all of scripture that show us the atonement is when we find numbers in symbols and segments of 10 and 7 together. 
Say it with me, 10 and 7 together. 10 and 7 shows us the supernatural symbols of atonement. The scripture shows us that whenever 10 and 7 are in the text, such as 17 or such as 70 or such as 170 or such as 10 and 7 separate, these are supernatural symbols of atonement. Say it with me, supernatural symbols of atonement. So whenever you look in the scripture and you want to see and you want to see God show me how the blood speaks better things than that of Abel, you will see hidden in the symbol of 10 and 7. Why 10 and 7? Because the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 27, in the 10th day of the 7th month, you shall have a day of atonement. So scripture has separated and consecrated 10 and 7 as a supernatural symbol of atonement somebody ought to say praise God so whenever we see symbols of 10 when we see symbols of 7 separately in increments or when we see the figures of 17 when we see figures of 70 or when we see figures of 170 these are supernatural symbols of an atonement code say it with me the atonement code and in that atonement code, you will see the blood that is speaking. In that atonement code, you will see a prophetic prefiguring and a prophetic parallel of the blood of Jesus. First of all, the first atonement code that I'm going to show you is seen in the actual creation. And we're going to look, if you will, at Genesis chapter 1. And I want you to see verses 2 through 29. You will see that the, the scripture shows us an atonement code in Genesis chapter 1 verses 2 through 29 and I call this the sign of salvation inscribed in creation when something is inscribed it's written when something is inscribed it's never taken away some of us want to know what about these biblical feasts are these just regular days are these just days that are just days we just get up and dance Hebrew dances are these just days that we shout hallelujah and blow the shofar or are these really days where God shifts the season are these really days that God made a promise to us are these really times that are supernatural segments of time and are they really separated from a secular segment of time have I really Really entered into a supernatural season in the time of Yom Kippur. How can I prove it, Lord? How can I prove that the season shifted? How can I prove that these feasts are different than any other time of the year? Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to show it to you through the atonement code. We're going to see the vision through the word of God of the blood that speaks. Touch your neighbor and say, the blood speaks better things than that of Abel. So wherever I see a supernatural sign of atonement, the blood is going to speak. I can't get any help in here. Somebody ought to say wherever I see a supernatural sign of atonement, the blood speaks. What do you mean the blood speaks? It's not just some blood that's shed and the blood's got a voice. What you and I need to understand is the blood that speaks, it begins in the book of Genesis 1 and it goes all the way to Revelation and it shows us every time we see atonement, every time we see a sacrifice, every time we see the symbols of 10 and 7, we see the work of Calvary. Some of us are in this place and we don't know what Calvary's cross has done for us. We don't know that it's broken the bondage of sin and it's also bro broken the bondage in the bloodline. We we don't know many of us that are here today that the blood of Jesus has brought a reverse against the curse. There are many of us that are here today that don't understand that the blood of Jesus brings recreation after devastation. But I'm here today to show you that the blood speaks. It gives a message. It shows us what Jesus accomplished on Calvary's cross. Somebody ought to say today is a day of supernatural breakthrough. Through. And every place I see the atonement code, I see the blood that speaks. Somebody ought to give God the praise and give God the glory. And we're going to see here in Genesis chapter 1, verses 2 through 29, we're going to see something about the blood that we didn't know. 
See, many of us went to Sunday school. We heard that our blessed master died on the cross. He rose again from the dead, but we don't really know anything beyond that concerning Calvary. The only thing we know is that he died on the cross. He made us free from sin, which is much to know. But we don't know anything beyond that. We, we, we're ignorant. We don't know to the degree what the blood has accomplished. And so now we're going to understand when we see in the Hebrew scriptures the supernatural symbols of atonement in the atonement code, we're going to understand how that blood works. We're going to see the blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. Somebody ought to give God the praise and give God the glory because Abel hallelujah when his blood it just cried out for vengeance but this is a blood that's going to cry out for mercy cry out for healing cry out for deliverance cry out for forgiveness somebody ought to give God the praise the text teaches the sign of salvation inscribed in creation. This means in the first seven days, this first seven days of creation, it was kadosh. It was holy. It was a time that was separated. This is going to represent to us a time before time. And we need to understand that even in the time of the seven days of creation, when everything was coming up to the perfect level of perfection, we're going to see inscribed in those seven days the cross, we're going to see inscribed in those seven days when God was creating the heavens and the earth, a symbol of the cross. We're going to see a sign inscribed in creation that's going to leave for us a symbol of Calvary. In a literal sense of scripture, we see here in Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 29, the context is going to convey the supernatural symbol of atonement through 10 and 7. Say it with me, 10 and 7. Say it again. 10 and 7 is the supernatural symbol of atonement that we found in Numbers chapter 29, verse 7 and verse 8. We found it in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. And we also found it in, number, in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29. So we are seeing that 10 and 7 are the symbols of atonement. The Bible says in the 10th day of the 7th month, you will have a day of atonement. So now we're going to see where do we see 10 and 7 in the 7 days of creation. Well, first of all, we need to understand that there were 10 utterances that God gave when he was creating the heavens and the earth. This is very important that we pay attention to because anything we see in the scripture that is a perpetuated pattern, if it happens more than once, if it happens twice, and it happens in a, a sequence or it's in sequential form, it is a pattern and God says it's put there deliberately. It didn't come there by accident. It didn't come there at random. It didn't come there because Moses, when he was writing the book of Genesis, ran out of words. We need to know there was a very deliberate intention on the part of Moses to mention the words God said 10 times. He wanted to get our attention, not once, not twice, but he wanted to get our attention 10 times during the, uh, the time of creation in a seven day process so that we would see inscribed in all those seven days of creation. We have seven because of seven days and we have 10. We have atonement. Somebody ought to say the supernatural symbol of the atonement code come on the atonement code somebody ought to shout it out the atonement code what does that mean for us when we are watching and we see the atonement code as God's supernatural sign of salvation inscribed in creation through the 10 utterances that Moses said that God uttered when he said God said and God said and God said in the seven day period. We see that the 10 utterances really prophetically prefigure the work of Calvary's cross in that beautiful creation but what we need to understand is there's a message inscribed in those heavens because we know that from Genesis 1 1 to Genesis 1 2 many things occurred the first thing says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth that's the whole entire story of creation in one verse. Now Moses in verse 2 is going to go into details. And he's going to isolate something for us in the second verse. He said the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. What we need to understand is when the Bible says the earth was without form and it was void. First of all, it was without form. That is the word in Hebrew, batohu, which literally means 
means it, it, had, it was a wasteland. It was already there, but it was a wasteland. Then we see the second word in Hebrew. It was without form and it was void. Babohu. Say it with me. Babohu. That means literally in the Hebrew language that it was indistinguishable destruction. So the earth was already here because it was created in verse 1. I can't get any help in here. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But nobody knows what happened between verse 1 and verse 2. So what we see in verse 2 is that something had transpired between verse 1 and verse 2. There was indistinguishable ruin on the earth. I can't get any help in here. And the scripture was showing us the earth was a wasteland, but it was here, but you didn't know what it was. Okay? You didn't know that what, what it meant or what it was. You couldn't discern it. And the Bible says darkness, kosek, was on the face of the deep. That means there was water covering the earth. That's why the Bible tells us very clearly in 2 Peter that the first heavens, the first earth passed away because it was covered with water. I could get any help in here. So now we see... The earth is without form and void. It's bohu ba tohu, or tohu ba bohu. And we see that it's indistinguishable ruin. And now we're going to see that the moment the utterances begin to take place, when he says, let there be light, the Bible says the Spirit of God moved on the face of the water and God said, here's the beginning of the creation process. He said, let there be light. So we're going to see in a seven-day period supernatural transformation and supernatural recreation. Can I get a witness somewhere? Somebody needs to say supernatural transformation and supernatural recreation. Somebody ought to say the atonement code because now I'm getting a Calvary connection and now I'm beginning to... To see what the work of the cross is actually accomplishing. It's bringing transformation and it's bringing recreation. Somebody ought to say the blood of Jesus is bringing transformation and it's bringing recreation. That's what the blood does. <laughs> say the blood is speaking better things than that of Abel. I know there are some of you right here Today, your destiny is just like the earth was. You feel like it's been overflowed with water. You've been going through trials and tribulations because always throughout the scripture, water represents sorrow. It represents trials. It represents tribulation. The Bible says when you pass through the water, I'll be with you. And when you go through the floods, they're not going to drown you. So we need to understand that water is always a symbol of tribulation. Many of you, your destiny has been in a place of great tribulation you don't have any purpose you don't know what God is doing you say God my dream fell apart you say God my house fell apart you say God my family fell apart but now I'm gonna show you a Calvary connection I'm gonna show you what atonement does I'm gonna show you how through the blood of Jesus you can experience recreation and transformation because God inscribed it in the heaven touch your neighbor and say God inscribed it in the heaven he wrote it there when he was creating the heavens and the earth you see you can't deny 10 and 7 he said this is a symbol of the cross you can't deny atonement that I created this world with mercy in mind, but I'm showing you what the cross does. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say what happened on that first day. It's going to happen to me right now on Yom Kippur. I'm applying the power of atonement over my destiny. I'm applying the power of atonement over my family. I'm applying the power of atonement over my mind. I'm applying the power of atonement over my house. Somebody ought to give God the praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we see this first supernatural symbol in the blood that speaks. 
I want you to see what this is all about. So let's look at the blood that speaks. Go with me, please, very quickly to the book of Exodus. And I want you to look at Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to show you something very powerful in the book of Exodus because we see the atonement code throughout the book of Exodus. But in this book of Exodus, I'm going to show you how the blood actually brings a deliverance from the power of the plague. Because the second supernatural sign of the blood that speaks is a sign, hallelujah, of supernatural protection over the election that God has given in your life. Let's look at the scripture. We're seeing um, Exodus chapter 12, looking at verse 13, and the Bible says this blood, now watch this, this blood shall be a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague will not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. What I want to bring to your attention is the word right now, because in a literal sense of scripture, the Bible is teaching us that the blood is actually a sign. The blood is a supernatural sign. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague will not be upon you. So the power of the plague is broken off of our life because of the blood so that no plague can come near our dwelling. But what I want you to see is the very word sign in Hebrew, the very word sign the Bible says this word, this blood shall be a token. Say it with me, a token. The word token in King James, but the word actually translates for our English language much better as sign. This blood shall be a sign upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, because the blood is a sign, I've got to see the sign. And when I see the blood is a sign, I'm going to pass over you and the plague will not de destroy you. Hallelujah. On the houses where you are. So what we need to understand is that the very word sign in Hebrew itself is a sign. Say it with me. The word sign is the sign. Say it again. The word sign is the actual sign. Because if we look in the Hebrew language, we're going to understand how the word sign is spelled. It is spelled very unusual here. It's, it's ut. It's the word ut in Hebrew, which is spelled aleph, vav, tav. Say it with me. Aleph, vav, tav. Now, when we see aleph, vav, tav, we don't think anything. We just think, oh, wow, it's sign. But when we look at it as an independent unit, and we understand that many places throughout the scripture where the word sign is, we're going to understand there's a Calvary connection. And so we're going to understand that the, that the writer, Moses, deliberately intended the word sign to be the sign. Because it says, Aleph, Vav, Tav. Those of us who don't understand the symbolism of Hebrew letters, the middle of that, of that Aleph, Vav, Tav is Vav. And we need to understand that the Vav in the Hebrew language is shaped like a nail, but it also is a connection. And whenever we see a word with the Bob, it's connected to something. So if we look at Aleph, Bob, Tav in the sense of Aleph is connected to Tav. Touch your neighbor and say Aleph is connected to Tav. That's the sign. That means everything beforehand in the Hebrew scriptures would be called the Aleph. And everything in the New Testament would be called the Tav. I can't get any help in here. You and I need to understand that the blood was a sign, Aleph, Bob, Tav. That means everything I see when I see a sacrifice, when I see a lamb slain, when I see the atonement that God set up in his word, it's an Aleph, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of things. It's the first. But then when I look at the, at the New Testament scriptures, I see the fulfillment of it in the form of Tob. So that we understand that the sign is the Aleph being connected to the Tob. Jesus said, I am the first and the last. I am the Aleph and I am the Tob. I am the beginning and I am the end. So that you and I need to understand that the blood was going to be an Aleph Tob sign. It was going to be a sign that the Son of God came down and he's going to become man. God said, I'll look at this, but I got to see Jesus in this thing. I won't let you out of Egypt until I see a sign. I've got to have a sign that he's going to come down and become man and break the bondages of the curse off of your life 
somebody ought to say the blood that speaks touch your neighbor and say the blood is speaking right now so the blood is speaking hallelujah say this with me Mashiach in every letter so the scripture tells us all throughout the scripture we have in the book of Revelation I'm Alpha and Omega but I do want to tell you Jesus didn't speak Greek so Alpha and Omega is definitely the beginning of the Hebrew or the Greek alphabet Omega is the end of the Greek alphabet so if we were to translate the Greek into Hebrew Jesus would not be saying I'm Alpha and Omega he would be saying I'm the Aleph and I'm the Tav and so when we begin to understand Aleph Tav he's saying I'm the sign I'm the sign that was on the doorpost I'm the sign hallelujah that Isaiah asked Ahaz to ask for can I get a witness somebody says the blood is speaking right now so that when I look at the work of the blood that was accomplished in the land of Egypt when I see it stop the power of the plague I'm beginning to know that the blood right now is speaking on my behalf and it's stopping the power of the plague somebody ought to say the blood is stopping the power of the plague that means every demonic spirit is coming out of its place of power that means the blood is going to release me out of my captivity because it's a sign God is saying I'm letting you out on an Aleph Tov sign somebody ought to praise God <laughs> Isaiah 41 verse 4 the scripture says who hath wrought and done it calling a generation from the beginning I the Lord I am he the first and the last say I'm the I am the Aleph and the Tav the first and the last Isaiah chapter 44 says thus saith the Lord the King of Israel and his Redeemer I am the first and I am the last I am the Aleph and I'm the Tav and beside me there is no other so anybody who wants to wonder what was the supernatural significance why did God need blood on a doorpost he needed blood on a doorpost because the blood was going to be an Aleph Tav sign that everything in this place which is Aleph which is the beginning of redemption is going to be connected to the Tav it's going to speak it's going to show us who Jesus is and what Calvary has done for us. Somebody ought to give God the praise and say Calvary connection. Yes. 